So today is Endgame Exclam. Uh, every Tuesday from uh, 7.30 to 8.30 here at the St. Louis Chess Club. And today we're going to be talking about um, Rook and Bishop versus Rook and Knight endgames. Practical endgames, a very, very important um, imbalance. And uh, hopefully we're going to get to learn some new things. What do we know about it? First things first. Which one is usually better? Which uh, cooperation is usually better? Rook, uh, rook and bishop or rook and knight? Rook and bishop. Rook and bishop as... Uh, um, I mean, the theory says rook and bishop. Uh, most of the times it's going to be rook and bishop, but obviously there's going to be exceptions as well. And we're going to see some of those uh, in today's class. Uh, I did have rook and bishop very, very... Rook and bishop versus rook and knight, or I did face rook and bishop and I had rook and knight uh, and I felt you know the differences and how powerful this cooperation can be uh, queen and knight is better than queen and bishop generally they complement each other better but uh, rook and bishop are, are working very very well together uh, generally again this is the rule there's always exceptions um, and today actually we're going to be starting with the exception we have this position and you're going to be white and you're going to try to uh, explain to me the position and potentially give me the best candidate so take your time think a little bit of about what you might need to do and um, and let me know white to move white to move I think in all of them it will be white to move if I'm not mistaken Yes, we're going to have white in all the examples we're going to look at today. This is a game between Jobava and Miton Kamil, grandmaster from uh, Poland, I think. Jobava, everybody should know about Jobava. He's quite famous. Entertaining player, very entertaining. The first thing I know, this is the very reason why I prefer the knight over the bishop, is because if you're on the other color square, there's not a whole lot. The uh, can do other right. Than block you from moving over. Well, in this particular case, you mean, or in general. It also depends on the structure. Uh, that's, I guess, another important factor whenever we're assessing this type of imbalances. Um, <clears throat> if we have pawns on both sides of the boards, obviously the bishop is going to be uh, the better piece because. It has a long range action um, and it's going to be easier to like transfer it from one side to the other whereas the knight is just kind of stagnant um, if we have closed positions of course the knight is probably going to be better and so on open centered we know the bishop should be better but in this particular case what how would you how would you assess the position? What do we need to do as well? Black has more space than the queen's knight. Yeah, sure. Uh, black has more space, but that could also be a liability. Aha, uh -huh. very interesting. So uh, we spot some weaknesses uh, on the dark squares of uh, blacks, right? In black's camp. Also, as uh, as uh, Ken was what was mentioning um, the pawns on the queen side are a little bit overextended I would say and they could potentially become targets also whose king is closer to the center white's king is closer to the center right and he has a lot of ways of uh, penetrating black's position so that could potentially become a factor as well So we spot all these ideas. So what are we trying to focus on at this moment? Candidate moves. What is this? Candidate moves. Yes, absolutely. That is, uh, that is the answer. Bishop takes c6 is the first move. Uh, and in this particular case, as I was mentioning, we see the exception. Um, we are going to give our bishop, which is a good bishop, could potentially attack the pawns on the queen side. But we are going to give it for the knight because the knight in this uh, particular case is a very good defender. 
and it defends the dark squares, the entry points, the d4 square, the b4 square for the king, potentially a5, and, uh, and so on. So bishop takes c6 is the first move. Now, if black takes with a rook, the situation is going to be quite, uh, quite bad, quite fast. What are we going to do? Well, if you go rook d3, I think I'm going to go king e7. Maybe even rook c7 could be an idea. Rook c7, put my bishop on the long diagonal on c6. If I manage to coordinate my pieces, then my position is not going to be that bad. Let's, uh, let's try to calculate a little bit further. That looks like a good move. That absolutely looks like a good move. Um, and it's probably as good as the main continuation. Though, you're going to take with the king, right? And now I'm going to try to stop you from coming with the king. To b4. Yes, uh, and now I would go here. I have to go here. If I take on b4, then just simply take with the king, and then the b5 pawn is hanging. So I have to pull. Uh, I have to play a4. I don't know how you make progress. Um, I think it's. I, I think it's still winning. I think it's still winning. Uh, correct. Correct. You can just move the knight away, um, then free up this square. King d4, king c5. If you manage to get your king to c5 position looks really bad yeah so I think knight d4 is a pretty good move as well also rook takes c6 directly just exchange and uh, we also see the fact that the knight is not on d4 so the king has two ways of, uh, of, of penetrating black's position b4 and d4 and black is just simply not going to be able to stop uh, that so after this king c3 a5 king d4 the position is completely losing we're going to take one of the we're going to take one pawn. We see um, central, central king in the end game is an extremely, extremely powerful uh, factor. So the position is just losing. He takes with the bishop. What to do? What to do? Knight d4. See this knight d4. Knight d4 is an idea, but. <coughs> hmm? That's another idea. That's another very good idea. But we also have to uh, pay, pay close attention to our opponent's ideas and threats. We will, we will see in just a second, uh, but I think, yeah, black has a little trick that might actually equalize on the spot, and that is rook d8. Getting off the pin on the c-file, now pinning the knight, the, the pawn on g2 is hanging. So after rook c6, rook takes d4, this position is not that easy. I'm going to play rook a4, next move I think, the fact that my rook is active is uh, is going to allow me to equalize. I think this is just an equal endgame. So we'll be very careful not to fall under this type of tactical challenges. Uh, if you go king e3, bishop takes g2, and black is perfectly fine. So Jababa spotted this and played a much more natural move. Again, he's on a very unpleasant pin. We know that if he tries to play something like bishop b7, he's going to have problems in, uh, in the ensuing endgame, in the ensuing uh, king and knight versus king and bishop endgame, because the king just enters the position via d4, c5 really quickly, and then the pawns are just falling. So first things first. King e3, of course. 
let's not allow him to go rook d8 and get off the pin, right? Makes a lot of sense. King e3, king e7. What now? D4, or even better, you had uh, you had well, that idea previously. Because the kings are away, so right, but the problem is now my king is also closer uh, to uh, to the bishop, and after uh, knight to d4, I can just simply go king d7. So then we can go for the <coughs> exactly, exactly, and uh, we can also eye the dark squares. That's the problem. Right now, the king defends. We don't, do we want to exchange all the pieces and enter the king's endgame? No. Probably not. Probably not. That's just going to be a draw. So, knight to g5, of course. Very good move. h6. Mm -hmm. Knight to e4. Let's say rook to c7 again. It's very difficult for him to get off the pin. What now? How to continue? What about the knight to c5? Knight <coughs> threatening a6. Mm -hmm. Knight to c5, okay. But that also allows me to get off the pin. Yeah, bishop takes g2. Uh, yes, bishop takes g2 could be... Actually, I think this... I don't know if I want to give you the a6 pawn. Um, a good question. I could I could go bishop g2, and I think this all already complicates matters more than we should. Um, knight takes a6. You're still better, I think. But I think I'm going to take this guy, take, and then just try to enter with the king. Bishop d5 here. I don't like knight b4. Just coming with tempo, and then the problem is king comes to c5. Um, so I think I would try to stop you from coming to c5 with this move. Always I'm going to try to stop you to, uh, from activating your king. It's extremely important. If you manage to activate your king, white, white's position is just going to be winning. So always I'm going to try to stop you. I think um, we're, we're, we're complicating matters too much. We don't need to do that. He's not threatening anything. What's the idea with knight d6? Again, knight d6 allows black, I think, to do something uh, that would help his cause. I see that if uh, you somehow... Oh, no. It's protected, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which doesn't kill you, by any means. Um, you're still perfectly fine. I think after f6, you can go something like king d4. This still looks very good. You have... Uh, you have great control over the dark squares. Great control. But probably I don't have to play that. I can just move my king maybe. King to d8. Ah, now you have knight f7. That's a good idea, yes. Knight f7, rook takes f7, rook takes c6. And you're winning a pawn and your rook is active, that's winning. That's definitely winning. Um, no, but if you did do that, then he can go either direction on the pawns on the rook <coughs> on rank six. What uh, in what moment? After king d8? Yeah. Here, after king d8? Mm -hmm. Yeah, king d8 loses. Maybe f5. All right, let's try f5. I mean, look, knight d6 is... It, it looks like a good knight, but I'm not sure. If it's, it's not really doing that much. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those uh, good-looking pieces that's not really doing much. You can, of course. You can go, yeah, all dress <laughs> uh, for the festivities, but... I mean, do you need all these things? <laughs> I don't know. Like, 
again, if, if I exchange the, 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 the knight for the bishop, the bishop for the knight, then my chances of surviving are, you know, getting higher and higher. Well, if, now if you go king d4, I go rook d7. So here. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to go king to d7. Knight f7, and then we Oops. we're starting to get uh, some <laughs> unnecessary complications. Yeah, very unnecessary. We don't need to do all this, all these things. <coughs> we're not in a hurry, guys. He doesn't have any threats. There's absolute. He's almost paralyzed. King d7 is met with knight c5 check, and that's a double threat. He cannot move his bishop. Rook d3 allows the exchange. Bishop takes e4. I mean, the rook on the c file is really nicely placed. G4 is an interesting move, uh, but I want you to tell me the idea behind it. Potentially, that square f4 could be utilized as, as an entry square for my king. If the h6 uh, pawn moves, then king f4, king g5, in maybe in an endgame later on, could be useful. So as long as he doesn't attack the pawn on e5, we don't have to go f, uh, f4. That's, that's, that's one way. And another idea behind g4 is... <laughs> <coughs> what do we do with, with weaknesses, with uh, pawn weaknesses? We fix them, right? So g4, h4, h5 could potentially become very unpleasant for uh, black. Because after that, after the exchange, knight f6, knight g8 is a big threat. And the pawn on h6 is immobile. Yeah? So <coughs> again, we're not in a hurry. We're really not in a hurry. So g4 was played by Jabava. King to d8. What to do now? What is he threatening? What is black threatening? What is black threatening? Bishop takes c4. So let's run away with the knight. Let's we're, uh, we're eyeing that h6 weakness. If you go on d6, I go king e7. Again, I'm. I, Knight on d6 is a beautiful piece. It's not really doing much, though. It is a beautiful piece, I, I mean, but it's not attacking any weaknesses. Um, try to uh, attach some purpose to your pieces. What now? Continue with your, uh, your plan. Fix the weakness first. H4, of course. H4, king c8, black simply doesn't have what to play. H5, H5 is, is an option. Any other option? Knight g8 first, yeah. And that's what he played. H5, take, take. We go back. I mean, does he have anything to, uh, to do? He doesn't have anything to do. He's, he's completely lost. And, and, and we don't have to hurry. That's the point. Knight takes h5, b4, rook c1, rook d7, knight f6, h5. The pawn marches all the way to h7, then rook g1, rook g8, and the game is over. I think they, I think he played a few more moves and he resigned. Pretty easy. Pretty easy and, and, and um, a very controlled conversion, yeah? I mean, he didn't allow his opponent any sort of counterplay. Okay, let's do another one with when the knight is better than the bishop. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's uh, he's kind of stuck also. And once again, we see the difference be between uh, 
the activity of, uh, of white species, of all of white species, and the passive black pieces. Having the active pieces in the end game but is. Here you got a white pawn keeping the king at bay from moving forward. Yeah. And that black king is stuck defending F7. Mm hmm. You cannot move rook c8 because of rook b7. And then the b6 pawn is uh, unprotected and cannot be protected. So kind of his pieces are, to be honest, almost in Sunzwang. No, the knight, to be honest, is quite nicely placed on c4. We could potentially find an even better square and that could be Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. the Where? D5. D5. The central central square. And it keeps, it, it keeps attacking the pawn that it's currently attacking, and it also looks at the dark squares on the king side. And you're also allowing the king to go to c4. Ah. I mean, that could be an idea for the future, but once again, we're not in a hurry. <laughs> <coughs> Generally, in this type of dominant endgames, we have to um, search for new weaknesses, like we did in the previous example, when we blocked with g4, h5, or just uh, spotted that weakness on h6. What could we do to improve our position in this case? The rook is pretty dominant, to be honest. Yeah. At least for the moment, she's doing fine. Keeping the king nailed down to where it is. G4, of course. G4, creating some more weaknesses, opening up a, a new front, um, adding some more tension to the position. Yeah, always do that. We're not in a hurry. HG, HG. Bishop h4, f3, f5, he's trying to his best to get some sort of counterplay. How to continue? There's plenty of ways to be honest by this moment uh, to that win, but let's try to be precise. Yes, we can do that. Rook c7 is also a move. I'm a bit worried about this move though. Um, I still think white should be winning, but I feel like I'm allowing some counterplay. Now, if you take, I'm going to um, get my rook active with rook f8. Rook f8, bishop d8 goes back to defend the b6 pawn. And then the, um, the rook could potentially start creating some problems. Mm -hmm. And now let's say I'm going to go here. I agree, I agree. Um, once again, unnecessary counterplay. I just don't want to allow him uh, any sort of counterplay at all, if possible. I mean, sometimes you have to accept some counterplay, but in this particular, particular case, there's absolutely no need to do that. Yeah, rook c7 is also, um, is also a good move. Hmm? Okay. Oh, uh, yes, the knight is still on c4, sorry. So rook c7 indeed is a useful move. You're attacking uh, 
you're preparing to attack on the sixth rank with rook c6, rook b6, rook takes g6, a lot of weaknesses and probably this is a good enough winning move. Um, he chose to play g takes f5, g takes f5, because uh, he spotted another idea. And that is to, to pacify his, his pieces, pacify his black species, and now just uh, improve them all together. Improve all of white species after killing the whole counterplay. So what to do? How to continue? How to do that? Now knight e3. Now we can go knight e3. The rook is passive on b8. The rook doesn't have time to uh, get into the fray. f4. Knight d5. Rook to b7. What now? None of black species. None of black, sorry, that's right. Yes, yes. So you, you can improve your king? We're keeping them extremely restricted, yeah. So we're gonna go uh, king c4 first. Let's say king d6. Rather than the pawn? Hmm? Rather than move the pawn forward, use the king? Which, this pawn? The pawn c4? Yeah, rather than pull him up and use the king? Yeah, yeah, we want to keep the king, uh, keep the king active, um, and keep its options available, um, open. Because if we go c4, then closing the position a bit too much. You have to be careful um, in this type of closed structures. If you close it too much, then you're just simply not going to have any entry squares after that. The king's more powerful because it can attack in all directions and forward, which the pawn could. But yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's more than one ways of winning this position. But I would definitely not go for that one. <laughs> that looks way, way too dangerous. I mean, think about it this way. Whenever you get to G2 or to H3, I, I'm, I'm going to start checking you. And then I'm going to plant a rook on G3 if you go, if you go up too much. Who started as a pack? Uh, right now is uh, black. We played king to d6 after king c4. Rook to a8. Okay, that's an interesting idea. Hmm? Okay, I go king d7. That's what he played in the game. It's a good move. Rook a8 is a good move. What now? No, <laughs> that's not gonna work. You're trying to lose this position somehow. <laughs> That's ac <laughs> that would actually, yeah. I, I mean, you might lose this position. I mean, I can go rook f7 if I really want to, and force you to go back basically. But no, 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 no. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna go after your f3 pawn. I'm going after your f3 pawn. <laughs> Yeah, and then black's on the No, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is something you should never do in, in, in your chess you life. The rook the other way, maybe? Like, either going all the way back to the first rank to get in the other direction. Correct. Correct. Now it's time to redirect the rook. Beca because we have more space on the king side to attack it, to attack black's position. So he went rook to a1, king to e6, rook h1, yeah. exactly, rook to b8, rook h7. Well, he's kind of in Sudzwang, more or less. What can he do, actually? It's a good question. He played bishop g5. Now rook h5, bishop d8. And now? Check. Let's, 
Let's get our night out somehow. It's time to get the night out. How do we get the knight out? And then? Ah, king d3, c4, no. But then, once again, your king doesn't enter the game. Oh, no, you can't go knight takes pawn and then check because no. the bishop still has it. Yeah. You could if you would play something like rook c8 or something like that, but he's not going to do that. How to get the knight out? Good, good start. Now, what can black do? Yeah. We have a big threat, and that is. The king has to go to e7. D7. D7. Yes. Why? Because otherwise he's going to lose a piece. How? How? No, he's not losing a piece. If he doesn't go to e7, d7, he's losing the pawn. Exactly. He's losing the pawn on b6. Oh. We're threatening to go knight takes b6. Simple as that. Because I was looking at the bishop protecting the rook, but that. Yeah. yeah. The rook is overloaded. Mm -hmm. so the pawn yeah. The pawn so king d7 is the only move. Now knight takes b6, rook takes b6, and we just win a piece. But now uh, a different opening is on the board. And that is knight f6. Knight to f6. The bishop is still pinned. King to e6. Where do we put the knight? Knight g4, of course. Bishop to c7. Uh huh. Exactly. King to d7. Hmm? Which is completely winning, for sure. He played the move rook to h7 first. Yeah. But this is still, I mean, it's completely uh, hopeless, I guess. Oh, he can't take that because then he loses He can. He can. He, can. he kind of has to anyway. But yeah. down a pawn, this is just completely winning. Uh, again, he's, he's completely uh, passive. And that's a big, big problem. Rook f5. We take another pawn. Oh, Every, like that. That everything is. falls. Everything just simply falls. Now we go c4. Well, he did play until the end. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Time to resign. You play. <laughs> you play. I'm curious if you can beat me this time game. No, come on, come on, you tell me. You play. Huh? King c6, okay. Already, already a bit suspicious. Okay, let's go, c4. b7, rook b1. Oh no! I think, I think we just made a draw. I think we just made a draw. I'm going to sacrifice my rook, then I'm going to go c3, c2, and then... <laughs> I'll give you another, I'll give you another try. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Rook you cannot say. <laughs> I don't know. He knows how good the same Correct. Like the rest of us. <laughs> Correct. He's still winning. He's still winning. He's still winning. Hmm? It's White's turn. We tried King C6 and we tried Rook C6. I don't think. Then Rook B1. Well, because the King can move after to protect it. Okay. Now the King can go. C6 or even A6, the mm -hmm. six. Where? It's very, I mean, it's very important, I think. If you go on C6, I go C4. Yeah, it's a draw. I think this is a draw. Well, move your rook to uh, D8, and then you're ready for your next promotion. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying if I do the trade off then I'm gonna rook Esther rush all the way into camp and the king's already in check. I got you. Uh, not necessarily, no. I mean, it's just the king is oh, very still, far. He's still got a couple of moves, yeah. The king is just very far. And it's a draw. Yeah. And I'm going to go here. We exchange. That's a draw. Um, <laughs> so that's the problem. This, uh, these endgames are quite tricky. But I think king a6 is, uh, is still winning, should be winning. Oh, actually, is it winning? Let's see. Is this winning? Can you make the rook just in that loop? All it has to do is go all the way down to d1 and then move over. The king takes that King d1 here? Uh, generally, we like to, to keep the rook behind the pawn. Because the king can't start moving, you move him over. Oh, I see it's just that. Can't no. come in later. Still c3. The king is very far. The king is very, very far. I mean, wherever you want to put the rook. Let's say on h1. And d2, and now you have to start giving checks. Then it's going to be a draw. Yes, if you don't go rook d1, you gain one tempo. So, how do you how do you get into rook versus knight? How do you do that? I don't think you can. I I think you you just simply cannot sub my pawn from promoting. Then king c6, c3, king here, c2, rook here, king d3, and I'm right in time. Oh. Yeah. Right in time. I, can't go rook h2 check. I mean, it, even if you can go rook h2, I go king d1. And then king c3, <laughs> I, 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 I promote a queen, yeah. So you have to be a little bit careful. Let's try some other move. You have to get the rook here. I mean, you're really close to promotion. You, you have to understand that. You're really, really close to promotion. If you get your rook to d2. Hmm? Rook to d2, of course. Mm -hmm. <coughs> rook to d2. Uh, now what to do? You're threatening to go rook b2, b7, and that's it. Yeah. Game is over, right? You so build a bridge or whatever it's called. You, you build a bridge and that's it. King to e5 was played. King to c6. Now it's safe to go there. Uh, c4. b7. Push the pawn. And now? Now you can put the pawn. Yeah, it's still going to be a draw. Mm-hmm, 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 check, and now this is the bridge, we made the bridge, and this is just game over. <laughs> well, it's a sea pawn, yeah, so it, there's still some dangers lurking, the, 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 the king is way too far, the king is on e4. I'm quite curious, actually. Is it? It's in the box. Yeah, this should be winning. This should still be winning. If the king, if the white king would be somewhere on h7 or somewhere something like that, even on f5, I think this is a, this is a draw. D5, e5, e5, e5 is probably a draw already. Uh, but yeah, this is this should be winning. Yeah. Now we start checking. <laughs> The stairs. <laughs> now we just go here. And that's it. Now go ahead and promote that queen. Now you do it. Promote a buck. That's it. <laughs> then I will run away with my king and I mean I will just beat you with queen versus knight. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> well it's funny. I think there was a title Tuesday, which was today actually, but yeah. many, many months ago. I saw a queen versus knight, a GM versus like some 2200, and then GM couldn't win with a queen, which is ridiculous. Huh? It takes a while, queen versus knight. Yeah, they played, they played forever, and, and at some point it was just like 50 move draw. 
but you have to tell me the idea. Hmm? So we're working uh, along, uh, along the lines of trying to exploit the weaknesses, of course. B3, knight d4? B3 is uh, the move, of course. Um, knight d4, just bishop takes d4. Well, not only. I think you lose mom, like at least. I, I think you lose both pawns. I think a4. I have a few ways of. Actually, no, just one way. Uh, it should be, yeah. No, it should be winning because the rook is in front of the pawn. The black rook. Oops. The black rook is in front of the pawn. So even this should be winning. Um, with rook b3. We have side control, and then we go king d3, king c3, king b2. We defend the pawn on a3, and then our rook is going to be able to start supporting the pawn, uh, supporting the movement of the pawn. If this rook would be on a1, that's a completely different story. If the rook is behind the pawn, then uh, black's chances of, of, of making a draw are quite substantial. But I think in this position, we can do it something even better than that. Of course. I mean, this is game over. Next move. Rook can just back up from the next can next move is what? I don't think rook b8. I think next move is even better than that. Rook a5. Take another pawn. Yeah. The pawn on a4 is going to be defenseless. Then we're going to have connected passers, and we know that that's just easy win. So instead of knight d4, he played the move rook to e5. Continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I was waiting for blunders. Thank you. Thank you. That, that was my only chance. That was my only chance. Knight d4. I mean, <laughs> again, I'm, I'm emphasizing as much as possible. Look for what your opponent is trying to do as well. Of course, follow your plan. but. Also look about, you know, threats in the position. King d3. Simple as that. But this is the difference between, you know, winning a game and just completely spoiling this type of advantage. I'm waiting. <laughs> g3, very good. Good job. No counterplay, yeah? He was trying to play f4. He was trying to uh, displace this bishop uh, from e3, from its perfect position on e3. That's just simply controlling. Uh, the knight on e6. He was trying to play f4, gain counterplay. Of course, we're not going to allow that. g3, king to f7. Continue. Rook a6, of course. b4. Um, I mean, probably the better defense would have been a4, but still, it, this is very, very close to being just hopeless. After, uh, because he can play the move knight to c5. And at least force the exchange of, of, of the uh, minor pieces. Oh, this, is this is annoying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is annoying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still winning. Yeah. But it's not as easy. Yeah? I think rook something like rook c4. Keep the rook on, uh, on the fourth rank. Then play a4. Um, how? How does he get behind the pawn? I don't think he has a way to do that, actually. Rook d5, OK. Let's go rook d4. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to let you do that. I think I'm going to let you go behind the pawn. Actually, no. I don't want I want to be precise. I'm not going to let you do it. Uh, actually, give me one. One moment. Game over. I'm getting all your pawns. Yeah? No, so it's still winning, but probably 
a slightly better chance. He played the move b4. And I think uh, Yusupov played a little bit of an inaccuracy here. He played a move a takes b4, um, which I don't necessarily recommend. I think a4 would have been much better. OK? Calculate. Rook c3. Yeah, but what he was saying was after knight c5, king d4 directly. That's what you were saying, right? Because, because you're attacking both pieces. Exactly. So after knight c5, king d4. Calculate that. Or you go rook a7, and you win on the spot. Rook a7, check. In, in intermediary move. Intermediary check that picks up. Well, I mean, you have rook e7. You do have rook e7. But now this, uh, this end game is just simply winning. Because our king is very close to the pawns. Yeah? So <laughs> this is what he missed. This is what Yusupov missed. Um, uh, and he just took on b4. This is winning. This is still winning. But it's not as easy. A4 to keep more pieces, more pawns on the board, uh, more weaknesses on the board is, is, is much better. Yeah? Rook c4. Now we're transferring the rook to uh, rook c6. Sorry. We're transferring the rook to c4. In this position, bishop d2, knight c5. I mean, really? You're allowing me to get so much activity for absolutely no reason once again. Okay. Why? I'm not even sure if I'm going to take that pawn. I think I'm going to play knight e4 first. OK, I take your pawn. So and you think this is winning? It's a, that's a big maybe, yes. Ma correct. I, it might be winning, but actually I don't think so. After rook f3, you might think even be worse. Slightly worse. I mean, you're going to make a draw, of course. But I think you have to suffer a little bit. So no, come on. I mean, again, you're, you're, you're making moves that you absolutely don't need. So rook c6. Keep control over the position. King c4, rook e4, king b5, king f6, rook c4, rook takes c4, king takes c4. The bishop still protects everything on e3. Mm -hmm. Which is probably better, but then I still go king c6. Okay. And now you're rook six. Yeah. I'm still going to take that pawn. Yeah. I mean, you can go rook e4, but um, I think I can just simply take now. Take, take, fuck. Collect this pawn, king c4, b4, b5, b6. Push the pawn, win. So king e rook e5 is perfectly fine, but it's still winning. It doesn't help that much. Um, and now he played king takes b4, which is probably a little bit uh, worse because it allows certain things. It, it allows an unnecessary simplification, and that is the uh, uh, f4 move. I think bishop, bishop d2 was much better. Uh, and now if f4, bishop takes b4, and the king is closer to the king side. Um, take, take. Now we put the bishop on f4. We defend the pawn on g3, b4, b5, and it's winning. So after king takes b4, you're allowing some complications after f4. Um, take, take. Let's see how he converted. What to do? 
King e4 was probably better. He played the move knight to h5, I think. King e4 was much better. Exactly. Now you're threatening things such as g3. Not yet g3, because uh, g3 I can just simply take. Take on g3. And then when you take b the bishop, I take your knight on f4. So bishop, I mean, you can play bishop before. And this is not easy to convert, yeah? Pretty sure it's still winning. Well, you go bishop here. I think you have to go g3, but then I take, and I put my king to d5 really quickly, yeah? To shoulder your king, to keep it away. And they are, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I did they absolutely 100% <laughs> nobody's disagreeing um, I'm trying to figure out whether this is still winning or not I don't have table base and any anyway we're not cheating here that's just cheating so 9 to b8 yeah the problem is if you go king to b7 what do I do? Hmm? King d3. That's the problem. How is this still winning? Ah, I think I see. What, how? Uh, I was suggesting like attack knight with bishop, like bishop to a7 or bishop to e5. Let's see. If you go bishop e5, knight c7. Knight d7, sorry. No, sorry. If you go here. Actually, I just go king c4. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is just simply a draw. Yeah, a draw. I think actually this position is a draw. Yeah. So if you go here, I have to go knight d7, king c6. Now I just simply go back. Yeah, yeah, there's no way you can make progress. Game over. Draw. So he could have um, at least put up a much better fight than what he did in the game. By just simply following common practices. And that is of centralizing the king in the position. Centralizing the king and trying to exchange uh, his last pawn as soon as possible. He played the move knight h5 uh, with the same idea. The problem is that right now the bishop... Um, the king is a little bit far, and I'm not really sure if you managed to actually exchange the last pawn because of what. <coughs> well, if you do that, I th think you might have some problems. If you go b4, I go, uh, he's going to go g3. Once again, he's going to exchange his last pawn. You saw, you saw it. You saw Bishop. <laughs> yeah, you did. When I played B4 and it showed a new new variation over here, you saw it. Yeah, Bishop A7, of course. Bishop A7 with the idea to go Bishop B8. Put the Bishop on G3 and avoid the exchange of the last pawn. If we manage to do that, then we're probably going to win. And that's what happened. And now it's just easy conversion. He hasn't exchanged the last pawn. We're just simply going to push it, use it as a bait, then get the g-pawn and beat two pawns up. Centralizing. Take the g-pawn. It's called, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's... Well, hindsight, it's so obvious. There's absolutely, I mean, there, there are plenty of other ways, I think, to win this, this game, but it's good technique. I think he had a good technique. Oh, my goodness. And he resigned because the knight is trapped. I think you go here, and now I go what? Just win on the spot. B6. So it's fun. Knight doesn't go anywhere. You have to give up the knight. Game over. So nice conversion by uh, Mr. Uh, 
Yusupov, I think, I think Yusupov was playing, and Anand was black. Uh, quite a classic. Can move the other pawn, hmm? He can move the other pawn, but then I'm going to take it for it's sure. An easy win. <laughs> and now, once again, you have to move the knight. <laughs> You're not escaping. You're not es the knight. The knight moves. The knight gets uh, gets lost for sure. All right. Uh, so that's it. Always, always pay close attention to these end games of rook bishop versus rook and knight. Uh, they're they're going to arrive very often in your games. I'm pretty sure. And uh, you're going to apply all these type of um, ideas and concepts to maximize your 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 chances Is of winning. It an underlying concept?